Associations 2023 Grand Inauguration Program. Please make your way to your seats. We would like not to start on Indian Standard Time. We are looking forward to today's program and we are eager to get started. Please help me welcome our Master of Ceremony today's program, Ms. Anzi Mathai. Welcome, Anzi. Thank you, Brino. I'm very delighted to host you today. I'm very happy to see Staten Island back together again. Let's all have a round of applause for Staten Island. Let's all rise for the American National Anthem. Oh, see, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming? Oh, see. Malayali. 
But there was such a time. It wasn't that back, far back. 40 years ago, with only a small group of Malayalis living and working in New York City, a thoughtful and ambitious decision was made to organize a cultural association for people who look like us, talk like us, of course, cook like us. In spite of all their personal hardship, a newly founded immigrants, the original founding members were dedicated to this cause. We are truly blessed to be bearing the fruits of their commitment and labor. We are all the testament to the success of this organization. Just look around this room. Here we are, side by side, with Malayalis from various age groups and denomination, all under one roof. We are unified, our community is better and stronger for it. Over the years, Massey has hosted countless cultural events, organized groups and celebrated festivals like Onam, Vishu, Easter. I am especially proud of the dance school and Malayalam language program that was designed to train our children so that they can be better acquainted with their home country. As America continues to change and reinvent itself, so do we. We are no longer struck in our practical ways. Have seen that change manifested into our current all-female executive. The executive members are all female this time. The interest generated from our female members has been fantastic and we look forward to your unique perspectives. Current members have generously given their time and commitment to our association due to their passion and care for our Malayali community. This enthusiasm keep efforts and spark life to our community and allow us to maintain our success and standing in this world. During the next few months, you will be hearing and learning our new initiatives through our special events and planned activities. I humbly request all your support and participation. Please keep your ears and eyes open. At this time, we wanted to acknowledge and welcome some of the faces that will make today's program extra special. First up is our Malayali Association President, Ms. Lysi Alex. She has been an integral part of our Malayali community for several years and has worn many hats. Lysi served as the chairperson for Fokana Women's Forum for many years and she was the treasurer for Indian Nurses Association of New York. A little birdie also told that she's a great dancer. So I can wait to see her moves. Under Lysi's fierce leadership, we are able to our best ourselves and work as a team and serve the community. On behalf of Masi, and I thank you and welcome Lysi today to this program. <laughs> On behalf of Malayali Association of Staten Island, I would like to welcome Ms. Binu Thomas. We are extremely privileged to have Dr. Shukla with us today and extend our heartfelt welcome to her on behalf of Malayali Association. On behalf of Malayali Association of Staten Island, I would like to welcome Mr. Binoy Thomas to the ceremony. The President and Team Leader of Malayali Association of Staten Island, Mrs. Lysi Alex. I would like to invite Mrs. Lysi Alex for the presidential address. As Warren Buffett says, someone is sitting in the shade today because someone planted a tree a long time ago. Good afternoon everyone and a very warm welcome to all of you for the auspicious occasion of Masi's inauguration ceremony. Respected Chief Guest, Ms. Binu Thomas, our special guest, Dr. Nimsha Shukla, Kerala Sabanjam President, Mr. Binoy Thomas, all other dignitaries, my fellow committee members and my dear friends. It's my honor and privilege to stand in front of you as the President of Masi. As all you know that, this is the 40th year of Masi. So it's a very special year for us. This time, I thank and honor all the past presidents, 
who led this association for 40 years. Most of them are proudly sitting in front of me. Your mission, vision, and hard work always be remembered. A big salute to all of them for their dedicated service and a big round of applause for them, please. I am incredibly honored to talk on behalf of Massey executive team and the committee members. We have a strong executive committee for Massey this year. Did you notice that all the executives are ladies? Yes. Of mercy. You are really going to enjoy the time. 
time we spent together this afternoon. Alone, we can do so little. Together, we can do so much. Please be part of all Masi activities and support this great association. Thank you. I would like to invite Mrs. Bino Thomas for the inaugural message. Uh, thank you, um, you know, before I get started, thank you, Ansi. Uh, you know, she's also a fellow MTA sister of mine, so I'm very grateful for her. Thank you, Ansi, for inviting me to this event. It's a great honor and a great privilege to be here and stand among you. Um, I also want to greet the executive staff, the ex executive committee. You know, I was telling one of the other folks that I was meeting, um, I was looking at the flyer and I couldn't believe that the woman took over. So it's wonderful to see that um, the women have actually taken that course on, and it's a great privilege. So I greet all of you. Um, I also want to greet the special uh, uh, guest, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Nimisha Shukla. Welcome, and I thank you, and it's a great privilege to meet with you as well. Like I said, it's a great privilege to be here as a Malayali standing here. Um, I just to quickly tell you, um, I'm a born and raised Staten Island resident, so it's my first generation Staten Island, um, born and raised. Um, so and a lot of people are looking at me and they're saying, you're a little simple, I heard some comments, she's too simple for this, yeah? <laughs> but that's how I was born and raised that way, so you know, I guess credit to my parents, right, somewhere. Um, but everybody do the faces when you And everyone that I'm going by, they're telling me I've seen you somewhere, aside from the pictures on the flyer, I'm sure. But, um, so and I know them, but I don't know from where, so maybe I've seen you in passing, maybe we've seen each other in the store or anything, but again, it's a great privilege to stand here among all of you. The association itself, the Malayan Association, brings me a lot of pride. And the reason why I say that is because years ago, growing up, this association has been in, you know, they said 40th year, right? They said 40th year, right? So I remember growing up, my grandfather used to get picked up from by some uncle. Like maybe the uncle's sitting in the room, or maybe he's not, I don't know. But there was some uncle that used to always pick up my grandfather and bring him for running races. You guys used to do a lot of events. And he won a trophy. Now, my grandfather passed away a few years back. I still have his trophy. And it says, Malayan Association, first place. So it, it, it's near and dear. So when when Nancy called me and you know told me about this event, I said, you know what, this must be a blessing in disguise, but it's a good reminder and a good memory. So I thank you all for that. Um, as uh, they just mentioned, um, for the past 15 years, I've been at the MTA Staten Island Railway. Um, currently holding the vice president chief officer position. Guarantee, um, right? But chances are, it's a man, right? You know somebody that's always a man, aside from Nancy and myself right now, but the majority of the people are probably a man, right? So I'll tell you a little bit of how I ended up in a position like this. Growing up, you know, you have that um, foster ship from the Indian parents. What do you want to be when you grow up? Naturally a doctor, right? Naturally a doctor, something in a medical professional. I said it for years, I wanted to be a doctor. And I get it, there's nothing against doctors. I love doctors, there's nothing against it. The thing is, it's the most stable job. So yes, doctors, nurses, medical field is great. But I had a different passion. My passion was also people. Just like medical field, my passion is also people. But I always envisioned myself walking in a suit into an office, work, working in an office environment, doing administration, so then I decided to pursue it. Now, being an Indian young woman, I was very discouraged. You know, more like you cannot pursue management because if you go, you have to deal with all the Americans. Right? Th that's what I was hearing. You know, you can't do It's hard to manage Americans, to manage those men and women. It's very difficult. So I was discouraged in many ways, outside people, inside people, whatever. The difference is, I didn't have anyone to turn to for advice. When I say that, I mean, you guys can ask about the process. Right? You can ask about the process. I didn't have anyone to ask about the process. So I did my master's degree in human resource management and labor relations. And when I was in my final year, my professor told me, I think you are the only Indian woman that's graduating with this degree and pursuing management. And he said, I don't know how you're doing it, but you're doing it. And I said, by God, with God's good grace and my hard work, it finally paid off. Which I think I took for granted that phrase, hard work does pay off. So not knowing who I can contact, who I can reach out to, I just did what I had to do and I had to keep going and keep striving and do what I needed to do. And like I said, I was discouraged in many different ways, but being, with all that said, right out of school, by luck, by God's grace, through prayer, I ended up in managerial position straight out of college. So I have about over 24 years of managerial experience. Last 15 happened to be in Staten Island Railway for the MTA. 
Um, when I say I took for granted the struggle, the struggle is unreal, okay? Taking advice and not getting that advice that I needed, no one to turn to. Um, it was a very difficult environment to move up and around. I'm going to spare you all the details because there's, I know we're in a time frame. I know there's so many different um, programs that are set before us. I'm also excited to be one of the guests you know, to, to watch and stand. Um, I say all this because I'm not saying this to boast or show off. That's not my, my uh, intent in being here today. Um, for those that are listening, the students, the parents, the young folks that are here, my message really is to follow out your dreams regardless of what the future may hold. But follow it out to the very end. Work hard. Don't take I cannot for an excuse. Don't take no for an answer. There's so many endless opportunities out there. There's so many things that are going on in the world in today's generation. They don't know what's going on as far as what we grew up with, my generation. You know, We didn't have iPads and cell phones and things like that. We went outside, we came, we did research, we did summer jobs. That's how I grew up. This generation right now, they don't know about that. But that hard work does pay off. Opportunities are always endless. There's a famous poet, a very old, old, old poet. Everybody studied this in school. Recently, my daughter was just doing a, a project on this, so it, it reminded me of that. It's by Robert Frost, a very different poet. One of the lines is this. The woods are lovely, dark, and deep, but I have promises to keep, and miles and miles to go before I sleep. What does that mean? Well, basically what it means is, you know, you, you ever pass by, you know, for Staten Islanders, you ever pass by Forest Hill Road or Rockland Avenue, and you see the woods on one side? You know when the snow falls on? What a beautiful sight. So me, I always get stuck in traffic. I think it's like luck for me, right? I'm always stuck at that red light in traffic. So sometimes I gaze into the woods, and what a pleasant, comfortable sight. You know, you look at it, you get lost in it. And you can sit there for hours, but you know what? That's comfort. That all of a sudden, all your, your issues and your problems and your sadness, everything goes away. But now you're standing there looking at the woods, and it's so peaceful, so comfortable. Now, the poet says, you can stand there, they're lovely, they're dark, they're deep, but you know what? You have promises to keep. You got miles and miles to go. Now, if I stood there and just watched that, where am I going? I have to keep moving in order to attain my goal. And that's really what it is, right? We have to keep on moving. We have to keep on thriving. You have to pursue your goals. You have to appreciate what's instilled in you. You know, you know, my parents always said this, and as you grow up, you start wondering, you start valuing your culture when you get older. You start valuing what's instilled in you. You see the hardworking parents, you see the hardworking family members, you see them going through life, going through their different obstacles, and you wonder, like, oh, yeah, I wonder, you know, maybe it's going to be easier for me. No, it's harder, right? But you have to instill that. So that Indian culture in us, we don't know anything otherwise than hard work, right? We, we just know that we do hard work. That's all we do. That's all we know to do. There's no laziness in our bone. There's no, no laziness in our backbone whatsoever. Maya Angelou is a uh, civil rights activist, and she once said, my mission in life is not merely to survive, but to thrive. And to do it with some passion, some compassion, some humor, and some style. What better style do we have than being Malayal? That's the best, best style of all, right? As a mother, what better style do we have? See, we have to keep on moving. We have to keep on thriving. Um, at my job, you know, um, I, I have this thing that we do with uh, all the new people that we hire. So being that I'm the highest level at my job, you know, I'm the highest one. Normally, when you go to agencies or when you go to jobs, you barely see the CEO or you barely see the vice president. They just sit in an office somewhere. I'm not like that, so I work a little differently. My motive is I want to be out there. I want to show them who we are. We want to see faces. So I have this thing. Every time we hire new people, we tell them we have a meet and greet session, and we get them in a group. So if there's 17 people we hire, 17 people will come into the conference room, and it will be me and my executive team. And we'll sit there, we'll do a meet and greet. We call it a meet and greet. In that meet and greet, we go around the room, we introduce each other, I tell them a little bit about myself, I let them tell me a little bit about themselves, and then I tell them, you are here for a reason. Do not lose your reason. Do not ever um, forget your roots, right? Remember your roots. It's like what we tell our children, right? Remember your roots. But I tell these employees, remember why you are here today. And then when you guys go out to the field after training is completed and you go to the field, in that field environment, when those senior employees, the people that have been there 25 years, 30 years, 40 years, they turn around and then tell you, why are you here? Get out of here. You don't belong here. You can make money elsewhere. 
I said, I told these employees, I want you to turn around and tell that senior employee, how long have you been here? And when they tell you 30 years, 35 years, then you have to wonder, the job may be not that bad, right? You've been here, you have two cars, three houses, two boats, you know, like everything and anything, and yet you're telling a new person that's coming in, who, discouraging them and bringing them out. I tell you, I tell all the new people this, so, but I tell you guys this same thing, right? We have our kids growing up in this generation. We have nephews and cousins, and, and everybody else is going on around us. We have to encourage them, especially in this environment. You have to keep encouraging them, because our culture is not like other. As Malayans, we need to stand firm, we need to stand strong, and we need to really make sure that we put that foundation set in them, because that's what brings us in the long run. It's not by my own merit, right? By God's good grace, and then also by our family culture and everything else that's moving forward, that's why we're here today. Um, I know we have so many different programs and, and so many things ahead, and we just heard about some of the things that are upcoming. I'm so excited to see all of this, to hear all of this, and to really get to know um, a lot of you. Um, once again, I just want to thank Nancy Mathai for inviting me today, and thank you for the committee for accepting that invitation and for um, reaching out. Um, I just want to wish you all the very best. Thank you, and may God bless you. Thank you so much, Binu. And we are so proud of you, and we are so grateful to have you here today. And like Binu was saying, we have miles and miles to go before we sleep. And this is what we have to tell our children, to not stop. That was such a motivational speech. Uh, please encourage our children and let them not be discouraged. Whenever you see them discouraged, we have to uplift them and tell them and keep reminding them the message that there are miles and miles to go before you sleep. Once again, thank you, Binu. At this time, we are going to have our lamp lighting ceremony, and I would like to invite our president, Mrs. Lysi Alex, to come forward. Force in 80s, 
And the last thing is get the entrepreneurship and then the impossible frontier of emotional empowerment. Because that emotional empowerment that all women need cannot be legislated, cannot be given by any men, cannot be given by any uh, other community. It has to come from within. And I have two daughters and I hope that I can give them that emotional empowerment to be successful in life. Uh, in the end, thank you everybody for inviting me today. Uh, thank you to President UC Thomas and the entire executive committee and the special guest, Ms. Judy Thomas. It was so nice to hear you. Uh, thank you all for listening to me so quietly. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Shukla. That was such a woman empowerment speech. And thank you. And do not forget to instill these values in our girls, in our daughters. Yes, we need to pass this on. And uh, it's such a such a motivational and encouraging those encouraging words. We are so grateful for you uh, for having me today, Dr. Shukla. At this time. We are delighted to have the president of our sister organization, Kerala Samajima Stadnala, Mr. Binoy Thomas. Nalla parivari kulo baate kaathe le ponda. Malayalam sister sister maay thola bandham. Mupattatte vasathe thene yana paray. Ibadi ni kina lairu ende surutakala. Vallari adatta surutakala thene yana. Ibadi very poor. Nia. फोर्मालिटी ने उन्हें आवश्यक नहीं है मलयालम एसोसिएशन छह दिन की ना कार्य नहीं होता ना हमारे यंगर जेनरेशन ने पार रिमेंडी मलयालम क्लास के लिए मलयालम डांस को ले इधर के बड़े रहे आप इन्हें अंदर हम आना और एक आयोजन क्या करना पड़ेगा ये स्टार्टअप ले ये और एक कमेटी कार्यशा और क्या बोलना नल्ला प Stegalan ayat itu lola ini kemudian ini ada nalla peribadi yang lalak nalla ruli yang lalak competition lom competition yang lalak perdehsi kya kelas samaja adanya orang kau mana competition orang naik lom nampal le kunjung lalak nampal le payah dergam nampal le culture values pagar tu lalak kaya okol ibu ni orang ni kita orang orang mobile malayalam ni lalak mandal abre ni kita nampal kaya kondo lom abre Okay, nama kita ini samouh itu lek yang lagi, awak tu berdi nampak kalau nama kita siapa? Ini, semua komiti yang membersih nama Malaysia Association, kerana semua jenis yang berlaku, semua bahagian yang terdapat dalam itu. How's lunch going so far? Thank you, Benoit. Thank you, thank you so much. So I hope you guys are all enjoying the lunch, and the ambience is very calm and beautiful. And I would like to thank Hilton for that. At this time, we are entering into our entertainment session of the day. We have concluded our inaugural session. And now, let's begin by inviting two well-known talented singers, Mrs. Tindu Francis and Mr. Roshan Maman for a duet song. <laughs>
तुझे देखा तो ये जाना 